Well, Alex was talking about the gag order, and now I'm going to switch this to the camera issue. The cameras in court for the trial. Very different. Gag order is now. What are we allowed to know? What are we allowed to report? Uh, trial cameras are that. Are you allowed to be there and watch it actually happen? There is immense public interest in this case, as there have been for other cases like OJ and Casey and Jody. They're immensely interesting, and the public has a right to know because we pay for this process. We are the public. We put these processes on. This is our government. And we also have transparent, transparent justice and a First Amendment in the United States. But a defendant also has a Sixth Amendment right to a fair trial. So where is that meeting point? The state today did not say anything, didn't go on record one way or the other, took no position about cameras in the courtroom. It's all Brian Koberger who wants it. Joining me now is Jessica Bublitz. She is a criminal defense attorney who practices in Idaho. Okay, so Jessica, um, if the state doesn't care, right, they take no position, mm -hmm. and it's only Brian Koberger who doesn't want cameras, how does it work in Idaho? Like, what are the odds that this judge is going to ban cameras based on just the defendant's request? Well, I hope that Vallo has not set some sort of precedent now in Idaho that this seems to be okay to ban the cameras in the courtroom and to have just an audio feed. And as you stated, the Vallo case was not a public trial. Uh, you had to get a ticket on the morning of. Those tickets were gone within 10 minutes or you couldn't be in the actual courtroom. And then you were put in a feed room and in the feed room, you couldn't hardly see anything at all. So you were really just getting an audio feed of that trial. And historically, the Constitution assures a public trial because that is fairness. That has been the idea of fairness. And I think we're getting away from that. And I, I really hope that we come back around to the idea that from the defense, from the public, from everybody, from the judge. Forget about the idea that scrutiny somehow in their minds is affecting how they feel. That the concept of scrutiny was to ensure fairness, that if the public can see what's happening, uh, that they will act more fairly and that justice will be uh, better off in the end. And that goes back hundreds of years, that concept. And so it's sad so, to me that we seem to be moving away from that. It's sad to me too, because I do not like justice uh, under a veil. I have done war reporting in a number of countries where you don't get to see any of their justice because there probably isn't much of it. And That's here, right. if you are paying the bill, you're, by the way, you're an Idaho attorney. You're an Idaho yeah. taxpayer. You, my friend, are paying the six million plus dollars for that Vallow trial. I hope you feel you got your money's worth. And you will be footing the bill for this one, too. How many people in Idaho are you getting the sense um, are starting to rethink their buyer's remorse on this and say, hey, we paid for this. We deserve to know what happened. And we deserve to know fully and richly, not just someone's opinion who says they were there. Well, I think there is a general frustration with regard to that. I think there was a frustration with the Vallow trial, but it's, for some reason it wasn't getting through. It's not being heard by the court themselves. And I think that the court needs to look back on uh, some of these cases uh, from the Supreme Court and think about the fact that they could be opening themselves up to a constitutional challenge on this in the Vallow case. And we don't want that to happen for the Kohlberger case as well. Because if they can successfully challenge that there wasn't a public trial in that case, uh, mm. that could become an issue. So they, they need to really be thinking about this uh, before they render this decision. Whoa, you just, you just blew my mind because I haven't heard anybody, Jessica, suggest there could be a constitutional challenge based on the First Amendment. Like, uh, mm. I've only heard the, the defendant challenge the Sixth Amendment right to the fair trial, but not the public process uh, argument. So that, right. that's... Fascinating. Just fascinating. Let, right. me, let me move on, though, because I do have a, I have something I need to ask you about. I always hear this and it always makes me, you know, bat yet crazy. Um, and that is that people who don't want cameras in the courtroom always say something like this. It makes the people act differently. It makes the uh, lawyers act differently, the judge act differently. It it makes the jurors uncomfortable. And that's part of this memorandum as well. Baloney is what I say after hundreds and hundreds of cases that I've covered, many of them with cameras in the courtroom, universally the answer from all players is it was a good experience. We opened the process up to the public. They got to see uh, how good American jurisprudence is. And jurors aren't on camera. 
that's they're right. The cameras don't point at them. I don't understand how anyone could petition like today to suggest that jurors will feel uncomfortable. Right, right. And some of the secret proceedings I've been in, certain types of proceedings that have been sealed, uh, those have all been the proceedings where I have walked away feeling like um, it's too bad that there's no openness to this proceeding, or I think the judge uh, might have done something different. I have three names I'm going to close this segment out with, and that's OJ, Casey, and Jody. OJ had cameras and he was acquitted. Casey had cameras and she was acquitted. Jody had cameras and she was convicted, but she skated on death penalty. So if anyone says that you can't get a fair trial with cameras in the courtroom when it's a high profile trial, baloney times three is what I say. Jessica Bublitz, I love talking to you because you know your stuff you and too. you know your Idaho stuff. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.